Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Today we're looking at the Your Analog Test 3, a really cool utility module for anybody into Eurorack, but especially as DIY people. It's basically a voltage meter that keeps track of the voltage in your power rails and a current and peak current meter that measures the current consumption of whatever module or modules you have plugged into its built-in power connector. There are two versions of the kit, one made for the workbench and the other includes a panel for mounting onto the rack itself. I got the paneled version, which is the same but includes a second baggie with the complementary parts to make it into a module. All of the electronic components come pre-soldered. All you have to solder are the display, the power connectors, the two buttons and the LEDs. That makes it a great first kit for anybody getting into DIY. Not only is it easy to build, it becomes a useful aid in building other modules and managing your system. I started by printing out the manual, namely the section labeled with front panel. Then I just followed the super clear instructions, solder the display, then the buttons, then the power connectors. On the version with the panel, the two connectors go on opposite sides of the PCB, while on the bench version, they both go on top, so watch out for that. When soldering the LEDs, I found it useful to line them up with their panel holes before soldering. The LED spacers help a lot too. Now, mounting the panel to the PCB requires a couple of small nut drivers, which I didn't have, so I used a couple of pliers, which was a real pain. I do recommend you go out and get the appropriate nut drivers before building this. I'm sure they're cheap and will prove handy to have in the future as well. The kit does come with two Allen wrenches, one for the screws that hold the panel and PCB together, and another for the nice black hex screws that fasten the module to your rack. The whole thing took me about 20 minutes, and would have been less had I had the nut drivers. Alright, cool. So, this is not going to be a very musical demo, as this is not a musical module but it's a very, very cool tool to have in the rack or even on your bench. If you develop your rack modules, for sure, because it's important to know current draw of your module. Also, if you DIY, if you build, it's really nice to be able to troubleshoot by making sure that things are within reason as far as current consumption. Also, if you build power supplies, to be able to make sure that your power supply is putting out the correct voltages. And even if you're just a Eurorack user, it's really nice because there's no such thing as a Eurorack user only. I mean, we all have to deal with organizing our modules in cases and figuring out uh, power supplies that are appropriate for our uses. Some people use more uh, digital modules that draw more power. Some use only analog modules that draw less power, but are also more sensitive to voltage variations. So for some people, linear supplies are gonna be more appropriate. For other people, switching supplies will be okay. So it's just really nice to have something like this. And let me explain exactly what it is. Again, you have two buttons and a visual display here four digits and the button on the right is the mode button so you can cycle between voltage current and peak current and here is the rail switch which cycles through the plus 5 the plus 12 and the minus 12. now you can already see that this skip that i have it has a linear supply and 12 volts is dead on but the minus 12 volts is a little bit low but i haven't actually had any trouble with this skiff it it works fine with analog modules you probably saw me using it with the erica synths full kit here set up and it really doesn't matter that much if there's a little bit less voltage in one of the rails as long as it's stable as long as it stays steady with current variation that's been my experience anyway so that's interesting, if this were an adjustable power supply, which it's not, the regulators are fixed. If it were an adjustable supply, I could now, looking at this, turn some trim pots in there and get it to be 12 volts. And as you can see, I don't have a 5 volt rail. I don't actually have 5 volt rail on any of my cases because I don't have any 5 volt modules. I think they're increasingly becoming more and more rare. Most manufacturers are putting their 5 volt regulators right in the modules. And I actually think it's a dying part of the Eurorack standard. 
I think most module manufacturers would do well to future-proof their modules by not relying on that 5-volt rail at all. So we're not going to test the 5-volt rail because I just don't have it. But here we go. First thing, you can check the voltage of your power supply by just flipping through these. Okay. Now, when you put it in MA, which is current consumption, you can still cycle through the rails and see what's the current consumption on each rail of the module that you have connected to this output right here. Or modules, if you use like a strip cable and connect many modules, you can test a whole array of modules. You can maybe test all of the modules that you're gonna put in a skiff. But I think it's a good idea to test them one at a time and take notes. I know that modular grid, for example, will say what the expected current consumption is on most modules but nothing will beat you actually testing them yourself. So here's one thing, when you plug in a module, you can hold to reset the peak. And that's important to do after you've plugged in the module because when you first plug in a module, there's probably gonna be a current spike and that doesn't really represent the module's working conditions once it's already on. So let's do that, let's hold this. And now we're resetting the peak. As you can see in plus five volts, I have zero current consumption because obviously I don't have that rail and the module doesn't require that rail. But right now I've plugged in this Erica Synths oscillator to test this module with an analog module first. So we're gonna turn this to plus 12. And right now we can see uh, that it varies because you know most modules will vary a little bit their current consumption as they operate. And uh, you can s switch, turn some knobs to make sure that you can get all the variations measured. And you can press that mode switch once again and you will see the peak current consumption. If you leave it there, if more current is consumed, that number will go up until it stabilizes. Right now it looks like this oscillator only requires 34 milliamperes, which makes sense for an analog module. They generally don't require a whole lot of current. So even though it's a nice chunky oscillator with lots of components, it draws really, really very minimal current. Let's look at the minus 12 and yeah, it looks like it pulls a little more current in the minus 12. So here we go. Now we're looking at milliamperes here. It looks like it's operating at 35. And when I turn the octave down, it goes to 36 and the peak is actually 37. Okay, so that's that's this module. It's the Erica Synths Polyvox DIY VCO. Let's pull that out. And now here's an interesting thing. With digital modules, the current consumption is going to vary according to what the microprocessor is required to do. So a module, for example, like this Lizard 2 uh, by Vibrazo Modular, it's a digital module with a lot of different modes in the firmware. And I'm guessing that the different modes are gonna have different current consumptions. So you need to, if you really wanna know the maximum current consumption of a digital module, you have to go through all of the modes because you know you wanna make sure you know how much it can potentially draw. So let's put in the cable and plug that in. And like before, we're gonna reset that that peak right and here we go we're on mode one of the lizard two and on the minus two rail it makes sense that minus the negative rail is not drawing much because as a digital module it's probably going to take most current from the positive rail because that's what's feeding the microprocessor the negative rail is only going to be used pretty much in the op amps that are conditioning inputs and outputs and such. So that makes sense. Let's look at what... There we go. The plus 12 is drawing 84 uh, milliamperes, which is actually not a whole lot for a digital module. I was expecting it to be more. So let's look, let's move around some of the knobs. We can change it from VCO to sequencer mode move that around and that doesn't seem to be changing anything let's look at the voltage 
and it's steady at 12 so that means my power supply it can still handle this module just fine so there's no voltage drop that's another thing when you start seeing a voltage drop in your power supply that probably means that you're going overboard with the current consumption for that particular power supply so that's also a good way to monitor and make sure that your power supply can handle the amount of current that you're drawing and the number of modules that you have in there. So let, let's go back to current now and we're going to go through some of the variations of mode 1 of the multi-LFO and looks like it went up a little bit went up to 88 on sequence look VCO is drawing a little bit more than sequencer mode external clock mode draws less than either so that all kind of makes sense in an intuitive sort of way. Now let's go through some of the variations here. Um, up and down, sequencer. I'm just gonna, the last two only work in VCO mode. So if I put it in sequencer mode, it jumps to the first variation of mode one. But that's a story for another day when we talk about the lizard two. Let's change modes. Mode two has a whole bunch of LFOs. It's eight separate LFOs. Let's go through some of the variations. And it looks like this module is actually pretty steady. It's not going much higher than 88 milliampers. Kind of low for a digital module. I was expecting it to go over 100. Here we go, mode three. Same thing, go through variations, turn some knobs, and it seems to, some settings go a little lower than 88, but it's not going any higher. Let's go to mode four, that's even lower. Change it to sequencer, change it to external clock. External clock is always less, I guess because the internal clock, both on VCO and sequencer mode, are drawing more current than when you have, we have it set to external clock. That makes a lot of sense. Let's go back and let's go to mode five, which is uh, HD oscillator mode. So yeah, there you have a little bit more current consumption because we're going to really high sample rate for this oscillator mode. I think it's two megahertz sample rate. So that's probably a little more taxing on the microprocessor. Let's look at what the peak. Yeah, 94 seems to be. I've gone through all of the modes on the Lizard 2 and all of the variations for each mode and also between VCO, sequencer, and external clock modes. And all of those, the maximum current seems to be 94 milliamperes for this module. So that's, that's how you would want to test a digital module. You want to go through all the possible firmwares or apps or whatever programs that you might have in that module and f flip all of the different settings, turn all of the knobs to make sure that you get an accurate measurement of the maximum peak current that, and that's the number that you want to write down for each module so that you can then do the math and figure out if your supply can actually handle the number of modules that you want it to feed. So that's pretty much it, I think. Let's look at minus 12 here and it never changed from 28. So it's really low consumption on the minus 12. Obviously five is not changing and uh, we're going to voltage and 12 volts are nice and steady. Minus 12 are steady as well at 11.76. So let me just out of curiosity, check out what the multi LFO is drawing. That's another digital module by VBrazil Modular. It's got a digital LFO here with lots of crazy functions, but it also has two analog LFOs here. So it might be drawing a little bit more on minus 12. Let's, uh, let's change that peak. Here we go. So yeah, it looks like indeed it draws a little bit more on minus 12 than the Lizard 2 module, which makes sense because it has more analog functionality. Usually it's the analog modules that will require, or the analog functionality that will require the uh, negative rail. So we're looking at a 32 milliamperes peak on minus 12. And on plus 12, 86. It's, uh, I think it's probably the same processor, 
so it's drawing close to the same amount of current. Let's put it in oscillator mode. It actually goes into audio rate. And yeah, it gets a little more taxing on the processor when it's actually going into audio rate. There might be a sample rate change. Let's look at the peak. Yeah, 90, 90 milliamperes would be the peak current consumption for this module, which is not a lot. So actually, I'm pleasantly surprised that the VBrazil digital modules are drawing relatively low current for, for the amount of functionality they have and the fact that they're digital and have these high-end microprocessors inside. So I think that does it for testing this. So really cool. It looks really nice. It's really solid. The graphics are impeccable. This looks like a really high-end expensive piece of gear. And uh, I really like the little uh, machine screws that hold the, the board in there. The, the display is really, really very visible. I, I don't think the cameras are doing it justice, but it looks really nice. Great little module, great function to have in your rack. Highly recommend it. Test three. I think this is pronounced your analog. I hope I'm not mispronouncing. Joran, please correct me if I'm wrong. And that's it. Stay noisy. If you like the video, please click the like button, subscribe, and join us in Patreon. See you next week. <laughs>